Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, interview series of studying in Denmark and living in Denmark. So in the previous video, we covered about the admission requirements for studying masters in Denmark with Anjali Burma, who got full scholarship to study in Denmark and she's from India. So in this video, we'll focus specifically on the studying experience of studying masters in Denmark. So let's start with the first question. Uh, so Anjali, what is your experience of doing a master's in a university in Denmark till now? And how is the different components surrounding it? Like maybe we can go to them individually, like maybe first you can focus on the study load, the ECTS, and then we can focus on the rest of them. Yeah. So um, as I already said, the, my overall study course was uh, expanded in two years. And in every semester, you have to cover 30 ECTS. So some some subjects are of five ECTS, some subjects are of 10 ECTS. And for five ECTS, they have a class of total 48 hours in one semester. So I would say that if you have a subject of five ECTS, then they, then they teach uh, like uh, 35 to 40 percent in the class, and then you have to cover the rest by yourself. So you have to, you know, do the hard work and uh, the effort to clear that course. But obviously the professors are really, really very helpful. You can also sit in and do lunch with them. They are so friendly and you can talk to them, whatever you have doubts, you can just book a meeting with them anytime and then you can go to their office and talk to them. Whatever doubts you have, they will give you some more contents if you require or some books or anything. We have a very huge library as well here, a very digital and very huge library where you can go and study and play different kind of games as well. Take a little nap as well. So it's it, they, they have almost everything what you need to study. OK, so in short, your study place is also like maybe your home where yes. you can do all the activities that you like. Yes. Uh, okay, so how is the grade? Uh, well, um, here they are not so tough when it comes to grading. Yeah, I would like to say one point that in most of the education in Denmark is not written. So most of the exams you give is not, they are not written. They are oral. Only 10% or 20% of the subjects have written exam. So in my first semester, I had only three subjects which were written exam ever uh, out of five and the others were oral in the second semester i had everything oral in the third semester i had only one written exam out of five and the rest four were oral and then in my last semester my master thesis was also oral so they are more focused in oral examination than written and then when you when you come from a country like India, you are more used to, you know, written examination, three hours of written examination. So it was a little bit difficult for me when I came here uh, to to present myself and to answer their questions instantly because it's uh, one to one and you have to answer instantly. But they are very nice. They will give you hints as well in exam a little bit uh, to I mean, yeah, they are teachers, so they obviously want you to achieve some good grades and all. So they will help you a little bit if you are stuck somewhere in the examination. But here the grading uh, is like kind of overall spread uh, over the scaling, like maybe 10 to 20 percent will get in the top notch and the rest uh, 30 to 40 will be in the average and the rest below average. So it's, it's like that here. Yeah. OK, so do you have like frequent group? Uh, work in terms of like group assignments or group projects as part of your course curriculum? Yes, uh, actually I wanted to mention that as well. It's a part of uh, Danish education system that most of the things uh, here in the education are group work. So in India we are often um, uh, you know, used to do uh, what I, or experiment by ourselves and uh, write things by ourselves. But here in Denmark you will feel this completely different uh, when you come from India that everything here is more or less in a group assignment like I get I used to get group assignments I used to get group experiments so they are more focused on teamwork and group work 
and they are more focused to teach you that while you are in your education so that when you go to the industry, you are ready for the group work and teamwork and yes, you can be a team player. That's why the education system here is like that. Okay. And do you have any study groups or associations in like maybe related to your faculty or department or maybe in general like study groups where yes. which help you to go to any yeah. foreign visits or something like that? Uh, no, not exactly foreign visit, but we have a small, uh, I, when I came here, I, I think we had a four to five people in a small study group and we used to stay in university after the classes and discuss with each other, make assignments with each other and, you know, help each other in understanding things. So I would say overall Europeans are very, very friendly and they help you in uh, understanding the topics if you are lagged behind. So, yes, I, I would say uh, I think everyone uh, here gets a little study group and they uh, do their studies according to their pace in that study group. Yeah. And at any point of the time, did you feel like the study load? Was it like uh, really too much maybe initially or you never felt that? Like uh, Initially, I did feel that because... Uh, there was a study gap of three years when I completed my bachelor's and I did a job for three years and then I came here. And here I would like to say most of the things are very practical oriented. So they give you theoretical things, what you need to know, but then you have to apply those theory in practical. So I was uh, struggling uh, in that initial phase because when you come from India, uh, you are mostly used to theories, I guess. Uh, I w at least in my university, it was like that. I was more used to theoretical than practical approach. So I, I was uh, really struggling in my first semester. But when I came to my second semester, the struggle was a little less because then you get used to the system and uh, type of studies and everything. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. So we already discussed in deep about your experience of studying masters, but uh, can you like summarize it and maybe uh, highlight that based on the question, like what are the major differences between Indian and Denmark education system? Like according to you, what are the major differences? Yes. Uh, if you come from India, uh, maybe we are more used to do all of our work by ourselves, but when you come here, you have to, you know, make yourself ready that uh, you will be a part of a group and you have your certain task you have, you need to do, and your other group members will do certain tasks and then you have to collaborate and make it work like a team. That's the difference. That's the first point. And the second point is, um, you have to learn the practical applications of the theories which you learn. So that's 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 really very important. You, here in my uh, course of study, mechatronics, they use a lot of softwares and uh, implementations like MATLAB and Simulink and everything. So you, when you come from India, I advise to to start uh, uh, taking a look on these softwares so that you don't struggle when you come here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so now the main question, which most people have always like, what is the total cost of studying without any funding? Yeah. And what are the other funding op opportunities? Like, for example, you got a scholarship and can people who don't have a scholarship fund them by part time jobs or internships or TA or something like that? OK, so in my university, you can become a teaching assistant and you can get a little money from that uh, and you can also approach professors to give you some projects you know and they will give you some projects and they will pay for you to complete those projects so you can also do that and finding a part-time job in the in the locality is a little bit difficult because uh, as i said they speak danish in their local language so it's a little bit difficult but it's not impossible because i also worked as a student worker in danfoss which is the number like topmost company in uh, denmark for engineering so I, I i was working there as a student worker and that in danfoss they speak english everywhere so it's not impossible you can they have also an option of doing student job in many multinational companies so you can do that 
but uh, it's not impossible, but I would say it's difficult. It's a little bit difficult because you have to be a part of their network to get into their company because here, as you also know, some bit the uh, network is everything in European countries. So you have to have very good in expanding and uh, taking help from your network. And if you uh, if you don't get scholarship, I think the cost of studies here in SGU is around uh, six to eight, between six to eight, seven thousand crowns per semester. And the cost of living is around uh, uh, four to five thousand crowns per month, including food and everything. Yeah. So uh, just to give that perspective, how much will it be roughly if you convert to Indian rupees? Uh, I think uh, if I convert it to Indian rupees, that let's take uh, include like around ninety thousand to one lakh per semester. Okay. Yes, and uh, then if you take some courses as well, then it's uh, it's little bit uh, it's little bit different because if you have to pay according to the courses you take, so I think the cost of per course is around 90,000 to 1 lakh. So you have five subjects, five courses in one semester. So you multiply that with that. Yes. So roughly for 120 ECTS, you will have a thesis. And how much is for the courses? Like maybe 15 courses or? Uh, yes. Yeah. There are five courses per semester. So it's around. Yes. It's around that. So roughly it will be between 15 to 20 lakhs for two yes, years yes, in rupees. Yes, you, you can take, if you want to be very sure, you can take between 20 to 25 lakhs for two okay. years. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So what is the proportion of Indian students, internationals, and how is the overall atmosphere uh, in well, the university and and... To add to it, you can also maybe later elaborate how is the social life for any international or Indian student? Yes, uh, actually in my university, it's uh, quite very international. We have people from 70 countries all over the world, uh, but most of them are from EU. And But also you can see many people from India, China, African countries and uh, Canada as well. So it's quite very international. Uh, so yeah you don't have to worry about that. You will obviously make uh, some very good friends and everybody speaks English. So it's quite a very good environment. Uh, about about the social life, uh, you know, the they Danes are called as Vikings. So their life is more like uh, uh, when they, they interact socially, they are more into uh, drinks and all those things. Uh, so if, if you can drink with uh, Danish people, then you are good to go. You are, <laughs> yeah, you are more than good to go. They are very open. They get open to you on a cup or on a glass of beer or something like that. So yes, the social life is also quite good here. Okay. So this question I ask everyone whenever I do an interview. So what is one thing that you like and one thing you dislike about the master's program in Denmark? I like the way the teaching is here. When I came from India, I never sat with my professors in university and had lunch with them or had a friendly talk with them or laugh with them, you know, uh, feel so comfortable with them. And when I came to Denmark, uh, this was the major difference I saw, like they don't have a barrier between teacher and a student. They are more or less like friends. So you can be very open to your professor and mention clearly about your the doubts you have. It doesn't matter how silly it is or how small it is. They are always there to help you. So this is the thing which I liked most when I came here, that you could be very open to your professors and tell them about your study doubts and they will clear that. And the one thing I dislike maybe is the Danish weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, around uh, uh, nine months it's cold here. So you have to be very prepared of cold weather and uh, rain. And yes, it's raining here most of the time. So yes, only you have only three months of summer. So yes, <laughs> I think I 
I dislike Danish weather. Yes. Okay. Okay. So maybe moving to the next question, we will. Uh, I mean, here you can just highlight briefly, like what are the job opportunities after masters in Denmark? Maybe focusing on your field. Yes. And. Later, we'll have another video where we'll discuss about in details about working in Netherlands and what is the uh, sorry working in Denmark and what is the work culture in Denmark. So now you can just highlight briefly what are the job opportunities and are there any post study job search visa like we have yeah. in most European countries for one year or two years. So yeah. So uh, when you are completed with your studies, uh, you are given a time six months for free to stay here and uh, that's included in your student visa. You can stay here six months after your studies to find job and everything. But if you don't get a job in those six months, then um, you have to have uh, 90,000 Danish crowns in your bank to show to the Danish government and then you get the establishment visa, which is for two years, so you have uh, top two years with you to find job. So ninety thousand Danish crowns, I would say, um, around uh, nine lakhs, nine to ten, ten lakhs Indian rupees. Yes. Yeah. And what are the job opportunities after masters in your field? Maybe taking example because you might know better in that, like. Uh, so, I, as I said, I was uh, working as a student worker in Danfoss. So, so Danfoss is the biggest engineering company, company in uh, Denmark. It was founded first in Denmark as, uh, sorry, it was established first in Denmark only. So, uh, job opportunities here in my field is quite good because they need skilled laborers. So, when you are educated as a mechatronics engineer, you have a very, very positive chance to find a job here uh, because as far as I know, uh, the seniors I have, they most, almost all of them, I would say, have gotten into jobs either in Denmark or in Germany. It's very close to German border as well. So you have an opportunity to find a job in Germany as well. So yes, the chances are quite high, but now Due to Corona, it's a little bit difficult because they have hiring freeze in most of the companies. But overall, I would like to say it's it's the chances are really, really high that if you are educated successfully here in Denmark, you will find a job here. Yes. OK, so finally, do you want to give any advice or tips for people who want to finish or start their masters in Denmark? Uh, yes, the people who want to start their masters in uh, uh, Denmark, I would just say that um, uh, just come prepared with your uh, technical skills and everything. And when you come to Denmark, it's really important to expand your network. So try to expand your network, which will help you to get into part time jobs, either in restaurant or in, as a student worker in some companies. So yeah, that, that's that's the advice I would like to give. Other than that, Denmark is very, very safe country to leave. It's, it's, it's one of the safest country in the world. So you don't have to worry about anything. Uh, and also it's uh, one of the happiest country in the world. So <laughs> yeah, it's quite good. Okay. Thank you, Anjali, for giving your time, for sharing your experience of studying masters in Denmark. So. In the next video, we are going to discuss about uh, the journey of Anjali, how she got full scholarship to study in Denmark, which I guess will be very interesting to hear. So don't forget to smash the like button, share this video with all your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, so see you in upcoming vlogs. Till then, bye.